So hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to do something different and interesting. So we have Pradeep with us in today's video. He's currently a data analyst at Indian Electronics and Semiconductor Association in Bangalore. The interesting part is he has done mechanical engineering in the past and also been a UPSC aspirant. Our channel has a lot of UPSC, UPSC aspirants as well as mechanical engineers. So I thought it would be a great idea to get some insights and tips from Pradeep on how to become a data analyst from these you know, different backgrounds. How do you make a career change? So welcome, Pradeep. Hope you're doing good. Yeah, I'm doing good, Aditya. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me here. All right. Cool. Let's get started right away. Could you give us a small introduction about your background and your qualifications? Yeah. So I completed my mechanical engineering in 2017. So after that, I worked as a design engineer for about six months. And then it was not something that I wanted to do for long term. So I, from childhood, I, was, I was had this dream like to become a civil servant, like an IAS officer or something. So I want, so I shifted to Hyderabad and started preparing for civil service examination from 2018 May. So I gave my first attempt in 2019. I missed by one mark. So it was very disappointing for me. So then again, uh, in 2020, COVID came. Again, in 2021, I gave one attempt. In 2022, I gave one attempt. Again, I missed by barely one mark or two marks, something like that. So it was like tiring process. So I wanted to take a break from civil services. And then I wanted to uh, take a career change and work as an analyst. So before in 2019-20 only, I had learned some uh, skills like SQL and Python while preparing for civil services. So I, so I came and uh, started preparing for data analyst career. So that's how I got into this. Cool. Uh, so can you tell me where did you realize your interest for data analytics or uh, why did you, you know, get that attraction to data analytics, not another field? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Jack Ryan and like political science. So while we were studying political science, we were lot we were used to talk about a lot about West Asia or like what we call as Middle East. So like people were saying like what how how petrol has changed this uh, oil 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 and industry has changed this uh, whole dynamic of uh, Middle East. So data will data is going to change the whole dynamic in the next century. So that's how I the data came into mind th then. So from then I was very interested in data. So I started researching about it. What are the skills in it? What, what should I do? Become a to, to do become a data analyst or data scientist or something like that. So I started researching there. So then again, I got to know that SQL. SQL so there is a language called SQL. So there is a language called Python. That's what I should learn that. So my sister was a software test engineer. So I, I got to know from her like how to learn, how to code, and all. All right. Uh, so once you started uh, preparing for your data analyst journey, can you tell me the skills or the tools you focused on? Did you follow a specific order? Yeah. So uh, while I was preparing, I I thought of joining an institution. So I joined an institution where they promised job guarantee and something like that. So it didn't work out. So I didn't like the course and, and all of false promises. So again, I had to uh, prepare on my own. So that's where I took my sister's help. And then I, I got to know which, which one of the skills were uh, like trending. Also, like I used to research on LinkedIn a lot. Like people like uh, I used to research on LinkedIn, like daily I used to take two to three hours, like what these people are focusing, what is the trending topics, what should I learn and all. So that's how I, I got to know that Python, SQL are the way most important things. And then one visualization should, tool should be there. So that's how I got into Tableau. And then again, I, I realized that so only these things will not suffice to get me a job as a data analyst. We need to learn statistics and there should be a little, little match. So that's how I, I mainly focus on these four things. And then I uh, get, got into machine learning. So that's good to know. So you're saying Python, SQL, one visualization tool, you learn Tableau and some uh, you know, statistics and machine learning, yeah. right? That till hypothesis cool. testing, it will be very good if you learn. Cool. All right. Thanks for that. And I'll also put uh, uh, the LinkedIn uh, link for uh, Pradeep. So if any of you are interested, you can drop in questions as well. Moving on to our next question. So once you've done the preparation, now we make our CDB and we start to apply for jobs, right? So can you tell me what challenges did you face? Because you also had some kind of a career gap, right? How What was the, you know, the ratio of interview calls you got? How, how challenging was that process? So my journey was a bit unconventional because like uh, so I was able to justify why I took that career gap, why, why I had that career gap. So I was able to justify that. 
and again i didn't apply for many jobs so whatever the first things i did was like i i start building my linkedin from the initial phases only like before starting uh, before starting to prefer data science i started build my linkedin profile so when i started build my uh, build my linkedin profile that's how i got more opportunities from linkedin as well as from the references outside like i met so many people like i met aditya there then i met uh, mithul there then i met aishit darwal there and then i met so many people there so that's how i got like i, I made a good community there so that's how uh, like i didn't apply for many jobs so like around i applied for like around 20 jobs that that too that came to my inbox from the linkedin linkedin rec- recruiters so i didn't go and apply directly so what about the opportunities i got i got two job of because of the recession and all i that job of job job that the jobs didn't uh, materialize so and then again i uh, i joined dot to production then i i worked as a marketing analyst there then i shifted into uh, isa where i'm working right now cool that's interesting to know normally we hear people say that you have to apply on nowkri linkedin to 100 jobs 200 jobs but you are saying that okay if you have a strong linkedin profile if you share content on linkedin some recruiters or someone will reach out to you right there is this chance oh, yeah that's how i got an opportunity to work at agoda uh, at bangkok okay so for, at first my resume got rejected then again the recruiter approached me for my resume directly so that's how it took they took my resume and they scheduled the interview they like i passed three rounds then again i fourth round i i, I didn't do well so yeah, so it was very at that at very starting only this was then again i got an opportunity from uh, american company then again a london company also i got an opportunity but it didn't materialize but this this is why like I, i'm saying linkedin is very important you need to build connections there you need to build a good a good a good community would be very good for your uh, job aspirations that's interesting to know right that seems unconventional but definitely good advice i would say now coming to the interview process right you are giving these interviews for companies can you give us an idea how many rounds you had what were the rounds what were they testing you on usually like first first round will be most basically will be a telephone round or a, or a test like in nagoda i had a test where around two sql questions were there around some uh, eight eight to 10 multiple choice questions were there so I, i cleared it then again second round would be like uh, basic basic sql round or basic python round where you can where they ask about joins this window functions like what is lag and lead what is rank and dense rank and row number so these questions will be there So and then again, if you pass the second round, there will be third round, like more me, like medium, medium to com- medium complex uh, SQL questions and Python questions, like or they will ask about the part, like what are the data cleaning methods, like wh- what are the some statistics concept they will ask. So then again, like, three four rounds. Again, the fourth round will be like manager round or something like that. Then again, fifth round will be HR round. Like normally, it happens like that. Okay. So whatever the interviews till now I attended was like four to five rounds only. Agoda was only like six rounds. Six months, but I didn't make it there. Cool. That's interesting. You no. Know? So when it comes to this manager round, did we have skew like technical questions or also be- behavioral questions or any business related questions? So, uh, so it depends on the recruiter and the company. So uh, like most half of the people ask me about uh, technical rounds. Uh, so the another half would be like behavioral questions. It depends on the manager and the it depends on the companies. Cool. All right. So now let's say you are doing these interviews you crack a job uh, can you give us an idea like in in this tough job market what are the salary ranges people can expect as a fresher data analyst so if you are a fresher and no experience in coding you can get around like 4 lakhs is a very good package according to me like 4 to 6 lakh package for a fresher in this data domain and that to in this market it, it is it's very good to take you're saying more experience you get you can go up the ladder yeah, essentially yeah, right yeah yeah Initially, in this market, it's it's good to take four LP to six LP as a fresher without any background. Cool. All right. One last question. So, in any of your interviews, did did they ask you about from mechanical engineering to your uh, you know data analyst or UPSC to data analyst? Did they pose this question to you or like how exactly you managed it? Yeah. Like, like to make this career change. Yeah. Yeah. like uh, there was a company called redwood software uh, it's a us company so it was like it was my interview was like 40 minutes like so in that like 25 to 30 minutes it was mostly about why you are shifting from mechanical to uh, data then why you did uh, 
UPSC preparation in the middle, then you then again you are shifting to data. So like the four years are wasted now. So then how did you manage that? So that's so how I was prepared for that. Like how I'm going to answer that, I was prepared. So I used to, I, I was able to justify why I took that break, like why why I wanted to follow my dream. Then the same things like what we what we what we say uh, when people ask the same thing. So I was I was prepared for that. Cool. All right. One last question. How important do you think are project portfolios? Because today many people say just doing courses is not enough. You should have some strong projects. What is your take on that? Yeah, it's very important because like in in the last company I got interviewed. The CEO and the uh, CTO, they look out my uh, LinkedIn and then they got into my portfolio. Then they saw my GitHub. That's how I got the interview. Like whatever the 20 interviews, like uh, till now I, I have attended around 10 interviews uh, in the 20 I applied. Whatever the interviews got, that is because of my GitHub. That is because of my LinkedIn. That is because of my uh, portfolio. So whatever, okay. like, so you're also, saying, yeah, and also like whatever the side projects you do, like, uh, you know, I built around two apps to data clean and all. Mm -hmm. So that's how they were impressed with like around the, the uh, this is, these are like side results, side projects you, should, you need to do uh, instead of like, these are very interesting to see. Like recruiters will be very impressed with that, whatever these, these side projects are there. Like they didn't uh, call me for the interview for the main projects. They look at they look at they looked at my uh, side projects that I've done. They played with it on the streamlit. So that's how they got to know. And they uh, called me for an interview. Cool. That's interesting to know. So you're saying traditional projects is fine, but doing the side projects, extra projects, maybe building a streamlit app with some user interface for data cleaning, like this, you know, catches the eye of like these recruiters or like founders in startups, right? Like everybody is doing the same, same uh, dashboards. Everybody is doing the same Python projects. Everybody is doing the same. Everything is same. So that's how uh, you are going to stand out in the crowd. Cool. You had a good LinkedIn profile, either you had a good GitHub, either you had a good portfolio links. Cool. That's interesting to know. All right, so I think that's pretty much the questions I had. So any final motivation tips for our, you know, aspirants? A lot of people are still looking to break into their first job. Would you have any small tips for them? Like be consistent with whatever you do. Like be it coding, by be it posting on LinkedIn, be it commenting on someone's post. Be consistent. Without consistency, you're never going to achieve anything in this field. Either you're upscaling, be consistent. You may take another uh, have a break or in a week or something like that, but be consistent. Consistency is what what takes you move forward in this uh, in this domain. Cool. Thank you. That's a good point. I think like generally, like any any social media or any job application, any tool you learn, I think it's important to be consistent. Probably for at least six to twelve months to see the result. Right? You can't be consistent for two weeks and then expect uh, you know uh, magic to happen. Yeah. That's a valid point you said. Uh, so overall, yeah, thank you for all your inputs. Hope our uh, viewers will enjoy this. So as I said, guys, again, I'm putting Pradeep's link, uh, LinkedIn link in our uh, description as well. Reach out to him if you have any questions. Thanks for the video. Uh, and uh, Pradeep, have a nice weekend then. And uh, yeah, thanks to the audience. I'll see you again in another thank video. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.